Hi everybody and welcome to the continuation of the Solid Principles for Machine Learning series. Today we're going to be starting looking into the first solid principle, which is the single responsibility principle. The video is going to be divided into two parts. The first one will provide you with a theoretical understanding of the principle. The second one will provide you with an example, very minimalistic example in Python, where we'll see how the example violates the single responsibility principle and we're going to try to fix it. Okay, let's start with the definition of the single responsibility principle. Here it goes. A module, a class or a method should be responsible for a single functionality of a software system. This statement says that at any level of your code, your components should only focus on a single functionality. There are many other uh, definitions of the single responsibility principle. Now, I want to provide you with another definition because I'm sure it's going to help you understand the single responsibility principle more and give you more context. This one is also provided by Uncle Bob, who says that a class should have only one reason to change. I'm sure this may feel a little bit mysterious as a statement, right? And probably the reason is because we really don't know what reason means in this context. But Uncle Bob says that reason is connected with the concept of an actor. If we reread this statement uh, using actor instead of reason, we can parse it saying that a class should only serve one actor and change and all the changes of this class should be connected with the needs of this actor and here it goes the connection between reason and actor now you be, may be wondering but what's an actor right and there are many different types of actors the the most typical one is just a person or a role imagine you have your machine learning framework right so you may have a class that serves a research scientist, okay? And that class has as its main actor a research scientist, but another class, perhaps connected with the database of your annotations, may serve your domain uh, experts on domain experts annotators, right? And here you have an example of physical actors, the so people, but there are also abstract actors, for example, an actor in your machine learning framework may be thought of as a preprocessor or an evaluator, so a component of your machine learning framework. Okay, now a critical question that you may have is how do I spot single responsibility principle violations? Well, you can ask yourself a bunch of questions. So first of all, you can ask, is the class serving more than one actor? If yes, then you're violating the SRP. Also, you can ask, do the functionalities of the class serve the same actor? So is the class uh, focused on the needs of that single actor that it's serving? If yes, then you are respecting the single responsibility principle. If not, you're just violating it. Final question, is the class responsible for many or too many functionalities? If so, then you're violating the single responsibility principle. Okay, there are a few problems that come with violating the single responsibility principle. First of all, your classes are going to be very entangled. So what this means is that if you change one single thing in a class that violates the single responsibility principle, then that change is going to reverberate across your entire machine learning framework. And, so, and yeah, that is not good because you have always like to change things and maintainability becomes just a super hassle. Then another problem is that you will end up with possibly God objects or God classes. What are God classes? Where well, these are classes that know too many things and do too many things. Okay, so now you, you should have a good understanding of the single responsibility principle from a theoretical perspective. Now let's take a look at some code and see how it applies to a real example. Here I have a minimalistic DeepL model class. As you can see, it's really a stub. It's not really a full-fledged class, but still it has all the ingredients that we'll need to understand whether or not this class is violating the single responsibility principle. So 
Here in DL model, we have three main methods. So one is preprocess that just preprocesses some features. One which is train, which trains the model with some features. And another one which is evaluate that evaluates, i.e. deep learning model. Now, let's run this script down here. So I just created some very dummy uh, features. Then I instantiate the DL model class and then I preprocess the features which get returned. Then I train uh, the model passing in the features and then I evaluate this. So let's run this and see if this works. Yeah, it works. So features have been pre-processed, model has been trained, and model has been evaluated. DL model violates the single responsibility principle for a number of reasons. First of all, uh, let's take a look at the DL model's actors. So, should DL model be responsible for pre-processing? Well, I don't think so, right? Because it's not up to the model to perform pre-processing. Should it be responsible for train? Well, yes, it's the whole point of having a deep learning model, being able to train it. And DL model, should it be responsible for evaluation? Well, no, it's not really its uh, responsibility, its main functionality. So here I have like a simple graph that explains that. So DL model, it's serving three different actors, the model itself, the evaluator, actor, and the preprocessor. So it's inherently going against the single responsibility principles. Okay, so we have DL model that has too many functionalities. Now, DL model uh, risks to be a little bit of a god class because it does a lot of things, right? And it knows a lot of things. Now, another problem that we have here is that, say, for example, you want to change uh, some pre-processing. Well, that is not just encapsulated by itself, but rather you have to come here to this DL model class that does a bunch of thing and then change it here. And this will just, so basically every time you want to change a pre-processing part, you have to change the DL model part as well, which is not good. Also, this class may actually become very, very large because here we only have like three basic um, public method stops, but I can imagine that uh, Pre-process is going to need a lot of private methods. Same thing perhaps for training and for evaluation. So this is also going to be, it's going to become difficult to read. Okay, so now that we know that a DL model violates the single responsibility principle, let's try to fix it. Okay, so how do we go about this? Well, the first thing that we'll do is to create a couple of other uh, classes which are responsible for the other two different actors, so for the evaluator and for the preprocessor. And indeed, I'll call the first class preprocessor. So, preprocessor class. And I'm going to get this preprocess method here and I'm going to pass it in the preprocessor class. The next step is that of creating another class for the evaluator. So let me write that. So I'll call it DL evaluator. Okay, and here I'll just p cut the evaluate method from DL model and pass it in here. Now in the signature for this method, I want to pass a model because we're gonna evaluate a model. Okay, now, Let's take a look at how we've refactored the code. Now, DL model is only focusing on one functionality and serving only one uh, actor, which is the model itself, okay? Preprocessor, same thing. It's only serving a single actor, which is the preprocessing or the preprocessor. And DL, ev DL evaluator has only one functionality, which is that of evaluating. The advantage of this is that if tomorrow I want to come up with a new preprocessor, new types of preprocessing, I can easily do it directly in the preprocessor without affecting any other component of the system, be that the DL model a DL evaluator or whatever components or client code we have that uh, use all of these classes. Okay, so now let me rewrite uh, this script down here, adapting it to the new classes we built. So we, we create the model, then we create the preprocessor. Here we go. Then we create the evaluator 
and this is a DL evaluator object instantiated and then we do a features first thing we want to preprocess this so we'll do a preprocessor dot preprocess and we'll pass the features in then we'll do a model dot train passing the features and finally we'll evaluate the model by doing an evaluator dot uh, evaluate and we'll pass the model in okay so let's run this and see if it works yes it works now the functionality is basically the same but this time with this new um, design we've resolved uh, we solved the issue of the single responsibility principle violations okay so i hope you understood the single responsibility principle which is a fundamental principle to use to write like better cleaner code that's more maintainable now in the next video we're going to start looking at the second principle which is the open closed principle that's all for today i hope you enjoyed the video cheers for now